Now let's look at once more another graph. This time we want to graph 2x plus 3y equals 6. In order to accomplish this, we want to start recognizing certain formats. Here we see we have the form a times x plus b times y equals c. Whenever we see this, where a number is multiplied times x to the first power plus a number multiplied times y to the first power equals another constant, then we can recognize this as being a straight line. And in fact, we'll say that this is linear. In order to graph a straight line, we simply have to graph two points. Two convenient points to work with are what we call our intercepts. We're going to find those intercepts by letting x equal 0 and solving for y, and then letting y equal 0 and solving for x. So let's do that now. To let x equal 0 in the equation requires us to solve 2 times 0 plus 3 times y equals 6. 2 times 0 is 0. We have 3y equals 6, and so y is going to equal 2. So when x is 0, y equals 2. To let y equal 0 in the equation requires us to solve the equation 2 times x plus 3 times 0 equals 6. Multiplying gives us 2x plus 0, which is just 2x, equals 6, and x equals 3. Now we're going to plot these two points. The point 0, 2, we move from the origin, 0 units right or left, but 2 units upward. And what we found is going to end up being called our y-intercept, since we have an intersection with the y-axis. Then we're going to plot the point 3, 0. 0, which is 3 units to the right of the origin and 0 units up or down. And this point is going to be called the x-intercept since it hits the x-axis. Now, because two points will determine a line, we can draw in our straight line and we've graphed the equation. Now let's work a problem dealing with a slope of a line. Find the slope of the line passing through each pair of points. Let's do part A. We have the point negative 3, 4 and the point negative 4, negative 2. To find the slope of the line, what we're considering is our slope is going to equal the change in our y value divided by the change in the x value. We can find the slope by looking at the difference between our y values. And we can use that here by looking at the difference between 4 and negative 2. And in our denominator, we'll take the difference in our x values. That's going to be negative 3 minus a negative 4. To evaluate, we're going to change the subtraction to an addition. This is going to be 4 plus 2, or 6. In our denominator, we'll have negative 3 plus 4, which is going to equal 1. And so we'll have our slope as 6 over 1, or simply 6. Let's do the same thing with our second part. We have a point 4, negative 2, and the point negative 1, 5. We're going to now use some abbreviations. Slope is going to be m. To find the difference in our y values, one way to do that is to say we have our y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. This just indicates that we're going to take the y coordinate from one point and the x coordinate from that same point and put them in the same position when we do our subtractions. So we can take negative 2 and subtract from it the y coordinate of 5 the second point, and then we have our 4 from the same point, see the negative 2 and the 4 come from the same point, and subtract from that the other x coordinate, which is negative 1. Our numerator, negative 2 minus 5 is negative 7, and our denominator, 4 minus a negative 1 is the same as 4 plus 1, which is 5, and so our slope is negative 7 fifths. Now we're going to look at graphing a linear function using slope-intercept form. Graph the linear function y equals 3 fifths x plus 1 by using the slope 
and y-intercept. We'll begin by taking the y-intercept, which is going to have the value of 1. We can see that because in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, the y-intercept is going to be the constant value. So we're going to take our value of 1 and plot that. That's going to be one unit up on the y-axis. Next, we're going to take our slope, which is going to be the coefficient of x. Now, our slope, you recall, is equal to the change in y over the change in x, also called the rise over the run. We're going to take our values of 3 and 5 and use them in order to find another point on this graph. We can, from our y-intercept, move three units up. That's one, two, three. And then five units to the right, one, two, three, four, five, to plot a second point. And of course, once we end up with two points on a line, we can connect the dots in order to draw the straight line. And now we have our graph. Here's another problem dealing with slope-intercept form. Graph the linear function 3x plus 4y equals 0 by using the slope and y-intercept. To do so, we're going to begin by taking our equation, 3x plus 4y equals 0, and putting it into slope-intercept form, which means we're going to solve for y. We can accomplish this by first subtracting 3x from both sides of the equation. 4y equals negative 3x. Then we'll divide both sides of the equation by 4 y equals, and we'll take our coefficient and write it as negative 3 fourths, and then we can take our x and put it over to the right. Now, what's the intercept in this case? Well, we normally have y equals mx plus b, where b is our y-intercept. What would be the value of b in this equation? Well, it would have to equal 0. So that means that our y-intercept is actually going to occur at the origin. From the origin, we're going to use the fact that slope is equal to our rise over run. In this case, we're going to have the negative 3 as our rise and our run of 4. That negative 3 is going to be interpreted as meaning to move a movement downward from that y-intercept. So we'll move 1, 2, 3 units down. We then have a run of positive 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. That gives us a second point on the straight line. And to graph that straight line, we now connect the dots. And we have our graph. Let's now look at another graph on the rectangular coordinate system. Graph y equals 3 in the rectangular coordinate system. Now, we could start by plotting points here in order to graph this. But what we really want to do is recognize that remember that this line is going to characterize every point on it. So for that reason, we're looking at all points which have a y-coordinate of 3. Well, a y-coordinate of 3 tells you that you're moving 3 units above the x-axis. So for instance, this point has the coordinate 0, 3. Here we have a coordinate 1, 3. Here our coordinates would be 2, 3. If we move over to the left, we could have this point, which would have coordinates negative 4, 3. All points along this horizontal line are going to have a y-coordinate, which is equal to 3, and therefore they will fit this equation. So this is the equation of a horizontal line. Let's look now at another graph in the rectangular coordinate system. Graph x equals negative 2 in the rectangular coordinate system. To graph this, we could plot points, or we could recognize that if x is equal to negative 2, then any point along the line that's drawn would have to have an x-coordinate of negative 2. As long as we move to the left two units, we end up with a point that would be on this line. Notice that all of these points, then, will lie along the same vertical line. And in fact, we want to recognize the characterization of a vertical line in this manner. We have vertical lines whenever we have x equals a constant value. The following problem deals with an application where we have to look at the graph in order to come up with some information. Use the following line graph to find the slope of the line segment representing Medicare. Round to one decimal place. Describe what the slope represents. Here we're looking at our middle line segment representing Medicare. 
we have points that are given on each end and I've transferred those point values over to the following sheet of paper. We're now going to find the slope in relation to this. So our slope is going to equal the difference in our y values, which would be 909 minus 446, divided by the difference in our x values, which would be 2016 minus 2007. Our numerator gives us a difference of 463. Our denominator gives us a difference of 9 years. We can use a calculator to come up with an approximate value rounded to one decimal place of 51.4. Now to interpret this, we can say that from the year 2007 to 2016, the cost of Medicare increases because we have a positive value, so the cost increases. And this value is giving us our rate, so it increases at a rate of 51.4. And this was given in billions of dollars per year, because we can think of this as being over one. So 463 billion divided by nine years is approximately 51.4 billion per year.